If God be for us, who can be against us? Welcome to uh, For Such a Time as This. We've got our four ladies this morning, Joe Montgomery, Nita Pike, and Mother Bell, Mother Mira Bell. And I'm Catherine Mason, and we're glad to have you this morning. I want you to get your Bible, find a place to sit down, take a time this morning to rest and relax for a minute. Let you do away with the housework for a few minutes. It's going to be there when we get through. So just take a time, get you a pencil and get your Bible and sit down. For I am convinced and I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor other creature can shall be yes. able to separate us Amen. from the love Amen. of God, yes, right. which is from the Lord Jesus Christ, our, our Lord. Thank you for joining us this morning. And we're going to go right to the word this morning, Mother Bell. I'm going to let you, you said you had something. We all have things we want to share. So we want you to just bear with us <laughs> and we'll jump in as, as the Holy Spirit leads us this morning. And you want to open with a short prayer first, Mother Bell. Oh, Thank Heavenly you. Father, Thank you, Father. Thank you again for this opportunity. We give you all the honor and we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory because you're so worthy. And Father, we want you to know that we don't take this lightly. So with all of our hearts, we say to God, be the glory. Yes. Amen and amen. You know, I woke, I awakened this morning. I don't know whether I woke myself up. Or I don't know how I was, but just before I awakened, I was just talking to the Lord and I was talking to people and I was just telling them, oh, you got, we got to have an understanding. So many people have a bad understanding and that word can, came to me so, so strong. Do you understand? And I could hear my mother say, she would tell me to do something and then she said, did you understand what I said? And I looked, she said, did you understand me? And I looked at her because I didn't know really what she meant. She said, okay, I'm going to tell you one more time, just one more. And she meant she wasn't going to tell me, but one more time. And when she told me, she said, do you understand? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, you better act like it. <laughs> In other words, I had to do something about it. If I had to understand it, yes. I better act yes. like I understood. And that's what got on my heart this morning. God has told us in his word oh, yes. what he'd have us to do, what he'd like for us to do. He told us how to do it. He's even telling us when to do it, uh, who, what, when, and how. Who told us that? God told us through his word. And so since we know now, what to do, I want to know why we don't do it. Is it because we lack understanding? Is it because we lack wisdom? Oh, God forbid that it's lack of respect and that it's lack of love. But he did say, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yes, yes. Right. You will do it if you love him. Mm. How can you say you love him? and you mistreat your neighbor? How can you say you understand and you're judging and misjudging? We, if you understand where people are coming from, that, they, we, that they're trying, their emotions are aroused this, in times like this. We're here for a purpose. We are here for a purpose. People are emotionally yes. upset, spiritually upset, physically upset. Their finances are all messed up. We are here to let you know God cares and God sees and God understands what it's all about. He understood when he made us. He understood why he made us and he understands how we're going to act since he made us. And since God knows all about it, I'm saying, Lord, the Lord has a plan he has a purpose and he has a promise that he's given us, that he's with us always, whether we understand it or not. We've been talking about the power 
of the Holy Ghost. You may not understand it, but yes. you got to believe it and receive it. And then when you believe it and receive it, he'll come into your heart and he'll reveal it and you begin to understand because understanding what the Lord is trying to teach us, the Holy Ghost come to teach us, to lead us and to guide us. Amen. We're not to lean to our own oh, understanding. Yes, that's right. Our ways are not oh, his ways. God, that's right. We he is high and far above. Amen. So I'm gonna read here where it says in Proverbs four and five, get wisdom and get understanding. Wow. And don't forget it. That's the main thing. We get it, but we forget. I know I'm very forgetful but I cannot forget what the Lord has done for me. I cannot forget how he set me free. I can't forget how he saved me, Sister Pipe. I can't forget how he brought me down through the years, through it all. I learned to trust him. I can't forget that. I may forget my name, but I can't forget him. We must not forget. Get an understanding and forget it not. And don't decline. Let the words decline from your mouth. When God gives you an understanding and a revelation, it's one thing to hear it, one thing to study it. You got knowledge, that's gathered information. But Sister uh, Mason. Mason, until we get a revelation that's right. of who God is and what it's all about, we don't have an understanding. Only the Holy Ghost can give us a clear understanding. Right. You know, Mother Bell, it talks about all the way through the scriptures, yeah. it talks about how God has the, the, the people of Israel remember. You're talking remember. about remember. Remember Moses. Remember yes. the prophets. Remember. He, he's refreshing their, yeah. their minds always to bring them back to that understanding yeah. that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. When we remember how Moses uh, uh, brought the children out. Mm -hmm. And then we also remember how they murmured and complained. Remember what happened to them. Remember while the children were in the fiery furnace. Remember that the Lord was in there with them. Remember that he was in the lion's den. We got to remember how he died on the cross and his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. How he died for our salvation. If we just understand that, that we got to, as you say, remember. Yeah. Look back. Look back where God brought us from. He said, and then down, you drop down in the seventh verse, he said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Now, you, you read over in James, it said, uh, wisdom, if you lack wisdom, ask the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wisdom comes from above. Mm -hmm. Knowledge comes from understanding. You can be intellectual and don't have a good understanding. Mm -hmm. You can have all the degrees you want. And if you have an arrogant spirit yeah. and an ignorant yeah. way and act ignorant and do things the wrong way at the That's wrong right. time, right. do it with the wrong yeah. people, you don't have a good understanding. I don't care who you are, right. how much money you have, how long you've been saved. If you don't stop and see where God brought you from That's and right. know the purpose of your life, Find out, Lord, what would you have me to do? Oh, yes. Lord, where I, why am I here? Why are we here for such a time? We are here to serve. What did God make man for? He created him in his image. He created us to serve him, to worship him to love him, to magnify him, and to love one another. And I'm going to close because it just got so deep. What is understanding? It's, a, it's knowledge and perception. What do you perceive? You got to know how to do it and when to do it. <coughs> you, you, you got to know. If you don't know how to do it, 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 you can't get it done right. You got to know. And You've where do you get that knowledge? By studying God's Word. Here we go. <laughs> you got, you can't get it. Here we you, go. You Open got those to go Bibles to up and let's, let's see what we can find. Let's go over here and it says, 
this, uh, it said in his word, study to show yourself approved of God. Oh, yes. That's in 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show yourself. And a workman work not ashamed. And needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing yeah. the word of truth yeah. unto God. So many times we're trying to just outdo. You know, that's what I like about it. We, we're not competing up here. No, sir, we're not. Yes, everybody's got a thought. And we just have to take turns to get it out. Because <laughs> yeah. we get to start and we don't want to give the other one a chance. But I'm going to give you a chance. We got I, to do this. We got to look to the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord gives wisdom and understanding to know how the, how to do it, you know, uh, no, I'm going back to what I missed this and then I'm through. In Exodus, we go back to the Old Testament. When Moses was getting ready to build, he, the, he ever, what, Be Bezerel and Ahalia, and he called for every wise hearted man, everybody. Mm -hmm. Those two had it going for him. But then, don't you think? that it's just one or two. That's right. That's right. That knows. That's right. It's a lot of wise hearts That's sitting right. in the pew. It's some wise people under the bridge that Satan has got them off. Some of them have got off on drugs. Some of them on alcohol. Uh, they, some of them were good people, just good people gone bad. And they were wise one time. They had knowledge and they had understanding. But if you turn to Exodus 36 and 1, you will find this out. And I am going to shut up. <laughs> That's okay, Mother but, but, but I we, got a, you, we got a long time here. Exodus 36 and 1. Then wrote Bezel. Now, if it didn't pronounce it right, you can do it yourself. We're not worried about that. It's and a word. A that holy app. Every wise hearted man in whom the Lord Let's put wisdom oh, yes. and understanding yes. to yes. know how to work yes. all manner yes. of work for service of the sanctuary. That's what we should do. Where is the sanctuary? Wherever the Lord is. Yes. You have a sanctuary in your heart. Yes. You have one in your home. Yes. You have one on your job. We ought to have a place of worship everywhere oh, we go. Yes, yes, yes. Not just in church. Amen. We need to know how. Because God, according to all that God has commanded, He's commanded us to live holy, to be holy for he's holy. He's commanded us to love one another. Do we understand that? Mm -hmm. When I mistreat you, I must have a bad understanding. When I lie on you, that's a bad understanding. God said, lie not. Say a liar won't even tear in his sight. So therefore, when we do these things, we act like we don't understand what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So then if you don't really understand what he's saying, Moses called these men together. And every wise-hearted man whose heart was the Lord had put wisdom. See, the Lord puts it there. You know, Mother Bell, if, if there are those people out there mm -hmm. who have questions yeah. and concerns, if they still don't understand yeah. after you've explained this to them, after we've, after we've talked about it. Yeah. And, you, and, you, and, and we're not going to cover everything. There's no, no way we can cover no. everything. And, it, you know, even though we may have a lot in, in, our, in our knowledge, in our right. minds, yeah. from having been in the Word and having studied, um, if people have that, if you have a, a question and, and you want to ask Mother Bell something, then just pick up that phone. Go, just reach over there by you on the on the table there by you. Pick up that phone and call and say, when Mother Bell gets off the phone, ask her. I mean, off the off the set, give her a chance to give me a call and let me ask her something. And, and Mother Bell, it. Mother Bell, will call you back. And we and we want to encourage you to call in for prayer. Uh, I want to or now. Are are you where we can let Joe jump in here about the response of such yeah. things as what He's you're talking what I'm about? I'm trying to say. Okay. I'll let him jump in. I took okay. 15 Thank minutes. Sister okay. Sister 
Okay, yeah. but yeah, but I want you but, to share with you with us today about the one lady oh, you just okay. talked about. That, Go that, ahead, right, know, The reason I, I said this, and the reason I'm doing it this way, I, I know the Lord is such a flow of the Spirit. Right. Such a uh, easing and uh, and so much consideration Amen. that we have for one another, and I, mm. we just get wrapped up. We can't tell it all, no, but don't. I still, uh, my thought is understanding one another. Yeah, understanding that when our hearts are pure and we have hope in Christ, we purify ourselves. We hear to what the Spirit is saying to us. We 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 get and understand to the point where we know, but know that God is real and he has revealed himself to us. And as he reveals himself to us, we're only trying to reveal him to you because you have to see it. I see it. But if you get in your word and understand the purpose of this program, is to stir up the pure mind. Oh, yes. We're not saying your mind's not pure. We're not here to condemn. Yeah. We're not here to bother, but we're here to stir you up and let you know. You know, they used to say, I looked down the road and I wondered how far I was from God. When you hear us, you wonder, well, how far am I from God? Okay. Sister Pipe, I Is know. She's supposed to give us. Yeah, let's let's say I want lady. because I want to encourage people to call in. Yeah, That's yeah. the reason. But right. this one thing Joe yeah. was I, sharing I won't earlier. Call the ladies now. No, uh -uh. <clears throat> but there was a lady called the very first program we had. She has two grand little great grandsons that are having some problems. They're the mothers having some problem, and in fact, one of the little boys' dad is in prison, and. She asked us today to lay hands on this. And we're going to do that, yes. Mm -hmm. And pray that she'll have wisdom to know what to do herself. Mm -hmm. But I want to give a good report. Uh, those of her family that she'd been carrying such a burden for, this last weekend, one of them, the daughter, her daughter prayed through over at one of the churches in a little weekend revival. That's a good encouragement. And I believe her son, which would make this lady's grandson, mm -hmm. I believe he, uh, I know he went to church Sunday and took his little family. He was in church last night, took his little family, and I believe he gave his life back to God. That's what, uh, I, that's what we they called in for, and that's worth it all. Yeah, Just let right. somebody come to know Jesus. Yeah. And so that's, that is an understanding. Yes. Uh, the beginning, yeah. the fear of God yeah. is just the, the beginning, beginning yeah. not the ending of understanding. Yes. When we begin to fear yeah, God, God enough yeah. to turn from our ways, yeah. and yet we cannot turn until the Holy Ghost yeah. quickens that inside of our heart to give us understanding. Yeah. He is understanding. Yes. To know Him is understanding. That is wisdom. And he's been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, mm -hmm. everything we need has yes. been made to us in Jesus. Yes. And that's why we need understanding Understand. enough to turn from everything else yes. and turn to him. Yes. That's, we're right on. I believe uh, everything it, this morning yeah, has I'm been strong. ordered of God. Yes. I know it has. You know, you know, Joe, we started out, I started out with that nothing can separate us yes. from the love of God. Yes. And Mother Bell jumped right in there with understanding. Yes. That yes. Just, and, and the way to understanding is to get in the Word. Yes. But you know, Mother Bell, some people don't have time to do that. No. Sometimes they may have to t turn on joy. Maybe the only time they've got is 30 minutes before they go to work in the morning. And so, and I always do that because I like Joyce Myers. It, it, and I flip that on and I get 30 minutes of the Word. And if sometimes it's when you're getting dressed. Wherever it is, jump in there and That's get whatever it. word you can get, wherever you can get it. Catherine, you said sometimes people don't have time, and that's true. A lot but of you got to take time. Yeah, you yes. got to take time. A lot of time, and, that, and it says redeem the time. Yes. For the days are evil. That means bite up. Yeah. 
buy it up, mm -hmm. go take it. Mm -hmm. But most of us procrastinate until the day's yes. over, yes. which is a sin in the long run. That's mm -hmm. what the devil wants. Legitimate things oh, yeah. all day long yeah. to keep you from doing whatever you want. But who was the woman? Charles, who was the woman that had so many children years ago? And and um, she, she had two boys that was preachers. And the way I understood it, they you know, in those days, they wore long dresses with lots of petticoats yeah. and she didn't have time to yeah, leave right. she had so many children I think it was Charles and I don't know what the other Wesley boys his name was you might know but anyway the story was told that mama in yeah. order to get her quiet time with God she would get them all around her and she had so many petticoats on and long dress. Nobody could see her ankles, much less uh, her legs. So she would, when the, she'd get her babies around her, she would pull up that top <laughs> layer of yeah. dress and put it over her head. And the babies knew it was mama's quiet time. Wow. She had to do that. You have to provide or improvise whatever it takes yeah. to get the time. Yes. It's not how long you spend, it's the quality uh, you spend. Yes, and right. if you meet him, five minutes in his presence, one minute in his presence is worth a thousand uh, years. And she whoo. put her little apron over her head and she got two preachers out of that. And one of them was <laughs> Charles Wesley. Yeah. I don't know what the other other boys now. See, for time we spend with God, God will give us our household. Go ahead, my right. darling. There and, and, and much, you know, in the sight yes. of God. If we just spend a little time, just spend some time. Yeah. It, we got two phone calls in, so if there's others out there that are needing some prayer, one of these, Joe, and we'll keep these in mind, and, and when the program's over, we'll, we'll sit here together. and we'll, we'll sit here and pray over them, and then we'll try to give you a call back. Uh, we had a call for three months behind, financial breakthrough, uh, laid off, the husband's laid off from work, just, just hurts, just all kinds of hurts there. Um, another one came in um, that, that is financial, uh, another financial one, and, um, Let's see, a, room, a roommate left, that she's going to, to school and she's having financial, a lot of financial problems this morning that we're seeing. So give us a call and we'll, we'll pray for you as we, as we go through the program and, uh, and, and just get the word back to you. Go ahead, Nita, what is, your, what is your thought for today? It's gonna tie, I know, it's just gonna tie right in here with everything we're doing. I, I was uh, praying about this this week and the Holy Ghost reminded me that we're in a race. You know oh, what Paul gosh. said? Uh, yes. He reminded he reminded us that where our our living for God is just like the race that these people go out and run. And uh, I had some, he gave me some thoughts about that. In a in a race, there's an entry fee. Well, in our race, the entry fee is Jesus and the blood yes. that gets us into the race. And then there's rules to every race. Oh yeah. Somebody has made the rules. I mean, you know. And in our race, this is the rules right here. Now then a lot of times people say, well, I don't like those rules, so I'm gonna change them. Well, that don't work because they'd get rid of it. I mean. And God said in his word, don't you take from it and don't you add to it. Just what I've laid down in this book is the rules that you run by. Yes, yes. And uh, the word of God said uh, that, that except you to complete lawfully, Paul said, you're not gonna win no race. That's right. You're not gonna win the crown. Oh, okay. And then uh, he tells us about how to dress. You know, people that are running a race, they have a certain way they dress. Oh yes. They put on certain shoes, they put on certain clothes. They, they, if they intend to win that race, they're gonna dress like they're supposed to. That's they right. don't go out there in high heels. <laughs> Men don't go out there in suits. Mm -hmm. They go out there in that race and dress like that race calls for. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, if we don't dress the way the Lord wants us to dress, we won't get very far in this race. He said, put on the garment of salvation. Amen. Yes. Your wedding garment. Yes. And you can 
mm -hmm. find that in Matthew 22, 11 to 14. And then we have an armor that we put on in this race yes. to help us in the running of the race. And our spiritual dress is uh, made up by the Holy Ghost. And the, the Holy Ghost is the one that keeps the weights off of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard this preached lots of times about weights, and they call it sin. Well, you know, you can get into a situation where there's people, opinions that can get on to you mm -hmm. and oh, slow you down. You, you, down. you don't, you don't mm -hmm. can't run. You can't mm -hmm. go nowhere. Yes. Every time you start to do something, well, the, the opinion comes up. Yeah. And you don't have anything to do with God, <laughs> but it's their opinion. The devil uses their opinion right. to cause you to slow down in your oh, race. Glory. And we can't be weighted no, down by no, what no. man has Amen. to say. Joe, it's... we've got to be free. Amen. And the only way we can be free is to get a hold of the Word of God and let the Holy Ghost lift those weights off. Free Amen. us from oh, all of those God. things. And when we're done, uh, free from them, it's not hard to run. Right. A, race, a race to this running a race, he don't go out here and carry weights with him. He don't go out here and carry his suitcases. He's free to do whatever he wants Amen. to do. And he can run fast whenever he doesn't yes, have those yes, And then we have a yeah. divine coach. Every racer has a coach. They t teach them how to run. They teach them and they teach them what to eat. They feed them uh, what to drink. They teach them how to, to go into this race and what to do. And I thought, we've got a divine coach yeah. that runs every mile with us. Hey, in this man. Hey, <laughs> Yes. Hallelujah. With us. And he feeds us exactly what yes, we need. Exactly. He gives us water when we need it. You've seen them how they go and hand water out when they're dry, uh, running along the road. Yes. He'll pour the water. The Holy Ghost will give us exactly Amen. what we need. I was telling Joe, I went to watch my grandson play t-ball last Saturday morning. Yes. And I was sitting out there and they got a coach at every base. All oh, scattered everywhere. And those little old guys would hit the ball, and some of them knew to start running. And some of them would just stand there, and the coach would say, run, run to that base right there. And he'd show him where to go. And that little old guy would take off to that base. When he got to that base, the coach would give him a high five, <laughs> tell him how good he does. Uh -huh. Give that all the way around. And while I was sitting there, Sister Mason, the Holy Ghost said, that's the church out there. And those those coaches is the way the Holy Ghost instructs the church. Instructs, you don't know where to go. I understand. You don't know what to do. I know my little grandson will stand there with the ball like this, and he'll say, "Do I hit it, Coach?" And the coach said, "Yeah, hit it, Brady." And he hit it like everything. But see, he needed somebody. To, now, yeah, when he gets it. older, he'll be able to do it. But he still needs a spiritual oh, coach. Yes, oh but God. But whenever, whenever we begin to understand that we cannot live this life alone. I mean. You don't have enough sense to know how to live <laughs> spiritually without the Holy oh, Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am amazed at how people yeah, yeah. say, just give me the Bible and I can live for God. I can do whatever God no, wants no, me can. to do. You no, can't you can't do it. it. No, I you don't know how. Can't That's do right. You don't have no understanding, no understanding. to give the Holy Ghost to show you. That's and right. you don't know how to run in this spiritual race. And oh, those run, yes. these runners in these other races, they don't know how to run in a race. No. They get, the, get away with the coach and they ask the coach, what do I do? Uh, how do I do oh, all God. of this? And that coach tells them, what That's are right. you supposed to do? Amen. And in the spiritual race, there is no competition. Amen. No Amen. There Amen. is no competition. Is no competition. I won't tell you, these people that are trying to be Go competition be. in churches, you're on the wrong track. That's right. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is not in that. In We're not compete. in competition. I don't care how long you've lived for God. I don't care how much Amen. revelation you've got from God. That's right. I don't care how many miracles God's done through you. Mm -hmm. That little soul that got saved Sunday. Yes. It's right. just as important. Exactly. Just as God important. sees them just like he sees us. That's right. The only difference is someday we're going to stand before rewards. Amen. And the rewards will be different. But as far as right now, God sees everybody alike. It does not make no difference who they are. Amen. And that's the reason we cannot have competition. Now, if you're in a regular race, 
boy, when they start around Amen. you, you just get a little bit faster. But that's not the way it is no, in the spiritual race. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. When, when we're in a spiritual race, we don't get competition no, with sir, nobody. nobody. Now, Joe, if you get a revelation and you run away ahead of me, honey, I'll be there soon. It may take me a while to get you, but I'll be there soon. Yeah, and we need, to be, to we need to be, oh, okay. be careful that we're not looking at other people. I mean, I've heard other people say, well, if I could just be like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. You, you mustn't be like them. No. You must be like God yeah. wants you to be yes, because right. he's got a mission for you. He's got something for you to do. And unless you're what God wants you to do, the mission will never be fulfilled. That's right. Ooh, and then there's a fine fi finish line. This is what school's good. There's a finish line. In the natural race, that's where they're headed for, is that finish line. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, some of them crawl across oh. that line. Yeah. I've seen them fall across that line. They've had blisters anyway, they all over their feet, but they went across oh, barefooted. Lord. They so, was determined they was going to make it across Just that like line. their life depended on it, right, Ms. Right. <laughs> and it, but it was their heart's desire. Yes, you right. don't get in a race like that no. unless your heart is in it? Well, they would have stopped the way down there because, you know, a race, you start out and everything is pretty nice and smooth, yeah. but it's not long until you're hitting valleys and you're hitting mountains and you're hitting boulders and you're having to go around this and go around that and, and pretty soon you're in a difficult oh, race. Right. But whenever they are uh, racing in the spiritual, it's the same way. We've got difficulty. I thought about Acts 27 when Paul was on that uh, ship and he told everybody, you know, he told them not to go in the first place, and they ignored what he had to say. Yeah, but when they got out there, and they hit this storm, and Paul was down in the, in the bow of the ship, and he come back up, and he said, Brother, let me tell you, this ship is going to go to all pieces. It's going to be destroyed. <laughs> that's right. But they're in the soul oh, on the ship that's going to be lost. Sense. But you got to stay on the ship. You got to stay on the ship. Right the ship. And that's exactly what happened. Amen. The ship broke a piece. People floated in on pieces. They floated in on board. Some of them swam, but not one soul was lost that's right. because they stayed with oh, the ship gosh. until it busted, went apart. And then what is that finish line? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Son. Amen. <laughs> Oh, yes. And I thought the key to that is faithfulness. Yes, sir. Obedience. You've got to be obedient. You've got to be faithful to everything God wants you to do. That's and right. that includes obedience. Yes. But you've got oh, to be God. faithful. Okay. You know, if these guys that's running these races, and gals too, that's running these races, if they decide that they don't want to race, well, I'm just going to sit down for a while and I'll get up and go later. Well, you, they're not going to get very far. Amen. They're not going to win the race. Amen. So we have to we have to be faithful oh. with whatever we are called to do in this race. And then I thought about the crown, oh. eternal life oh, yes. for eternity. Oh, and it's not a crown that's incorruptible. It's a crown that lasts forever. Amen. It's a crown. And, and God's word said, run with patience. Mm -hmm. You've yeah. got to be patient. you got, you got to want mm. this more than you want anything else. That's right. And I'm going to tell you, Mother Belle, we can, we've got to have a, a, such a hunger oh, and a desire for the understanding of this word that or bad. we ain't going to make, make it. it. No, that may not be good English, but you know what I'm saying. We ain't going to make it. That's right. If you don't have a hunger for the things of God, you are not going to make it. It's That's not right. just because I say I believe in Jesus. It's because I get into this race and I run with everything I've got within me and I listen Praise to what God, God has to yes, say. Yes. And I listen to what the Holy Ghost yes. says. Yes. Stop me to stop, stop, stop. Nobody else may be stopping, but it's time for you to stop and get still. Mm -hmm. When you stop and get still and stop. begin to listen to the Holy Ghost, then he's the one that instructs Amen. you some more. That's, That's right. the way you God. win the race. That's right. Yeah. I thought there may be people that has dropped out of the race for whatever mm -hmm. reason. All the Lord wants you to do is to repent and get right back in the race. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Take a drink of water and, and get right back in there. And maybe has right. never, never been in a race. Let me tell you, this, this race has a golden oh, ending God. to it. When we see eternity yes. in heaven with Jesus, it's going to be worth everything 
everything wow. we've went through in this life. And you're going to go through it whether you are on the spiritual race or not. Life has got troubles for people that don't even know God. But to know him is to get help from him, Amen. to be guided by him, Amen. to be strengthened by him. Oh, yes. And then the end, of, we get the, the crown. And I was thinking about special need people have their own race. Yes. I'm in one of the, I'm in that race. You know, oh, okay. that special need people, they, special they don't care. You don't know, matter how long it takes them to get yes, there. Amen. They're still a winner when they go across. That's right. That. Amen. Yes. That's it. Oh, that's they, they may be weak. There's people weak in faith. They yeah. said, I can't make it. Well, sit down and start eating the Word of God. Yes. You'll make it. You'll yes. make it. Yes. If you just get a hold of the Word of God and begin to seek God, He'll give you the strength. They get weak. We'll get weak in faith. The Bible said that we have the weak among oh, us. Yes. Now, that don't mean that these people that say they've got a lot of faith. And I'm going to throw this in right here. Do it. Okay. I've heard this over and over. Well, if you had enough faith, this wouldn't happen and that wouldn't that's happen. Right, that's right. Listen to me, honey. You only got one bucket of faith when you got saved. <laughs> and that was faith in God. Yes. There's not no more buckets out there. All you have to do is feed that faith yes. and exercise amen, that faith. Amen. And then it begins to grow. Yes. But you've got all the faith you're ever going to get. And whenever you say, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, I believe in this word, you've got your bucket of faith. Now then start Amen. feeding and start exercising. That's the only difference in faith among older saints or among those that have known oh, God a long God. time. Oh, yes. So don't let nobody tell you Amen. that you don't have enough faith because anybody that has a bucket of faith has got all the faith they need. Ooh. Use it. <laughs> you can never <laughs> with that bucket of faith. Amen. You can you can walk Amen. with oh. in places that nobody ever thought oh, about walking yes. with that bucket of faith. That's right. So don't let nobody discourage Amen. you that way. Well, your and, faith is impossible to please God. Right. You can't and, please him. And right. I thought about these special need people. They sometimes they not they can't walk real fast. I've been in a lot of trials. I couldn't walk real fast. In fact, I sit down most of the time. And I talk to the Lord about it. Mm -hmm. And if I'd have been in a, in, that, in a race where you had to ru rush over the line, I wouldn't have never no, made it. Oh, I wouldn't either. And I'm still sometimes oh, have God. to sit down. But I won't tell you, when they get across the line, their reward is just as important as anybody that was well and could walk Hallelujah. across that yes. line. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says in Galatians 5, 17. You did run well. Who, Who hindered you that you would not obey oh, the truth? Mm -hmm. That's the only reason you get out of the race. Yes. You don't Once obey. you get into the spiritual race, yes. the only reason you get out of the race yes. is because you fail to obey oh, God's word. God. And the Holy Ghost is just standing there constantly yes. saying, come on, oh, yeah, come, come on. on, you can make it. Oh, you yes. can make it. You just listen to me. Yeah. Come on. I'll tell you when to run. I'll tell you when to hit the ball. I'll tell you whatever to do. And you know, those little old coaches would get around that bunch of little old kids and they, they'd say, they'd encourage them, you know, they'd give them all kinds of encouragement to, to help them. And then all of a sudden they'd throw up their hands and begin to holler because they've been encouraged oh, by what yes. that coach oh, said. God. I won't tell you, if you're Thank not you, full Jesus. of the Holy Ghost this morning, <laughs> if he's not living on the inside, Hallelujah. you can call oh. me old-fashioned Pentecost. Hallelujah. You can call God. me anything you want to, but I wouldn't go to the post office without the Holy Ghost. That's what my mother in Israel used to say. And the more I heard it, the more I believed it. You know, you can get down to the post office and you can run right face to face with the devil. I mean, who's going to show you how to get out of there? But if you've got the Holy Ghost with you, he'll give you the instruction. Hallelujah. He'll guide and direct you Hallelujah. to get, get out and move, oh, go on yes, and move oh, and yes. live with God. Oh, oh that we'd understand this is yes. a race. Yes. This, there's an end to it. There's an end to it. I don't care whether it's by death or whether it's by uh, the coming of the Lord. It's an end to it. And I'm going to tell you, this pile of bones is going to go across the line oh, and she's going to hear, well done, thou well faithful servant. I wasn't always perfect. I've made mistakes like you can't believe, but I'm going to go 
and hear those words because I believe God has forgiven me of my mistakes. Amen. He's helped me when I was Hallelujah. weak. He helped me when I didn't know what I was doing. And Amen. that was a, a lot of the time. And that's probably what we're having right here. Uh, but we're, we we know what we're doing in God. Amen. And that's, that's right. what counts. Amen. You know. I want to pray for those that had yes. one time. I know of people in this town that at one time walked with God as close as anybody I've ever known. Yes. And I don't know the reason, but somehow or other, they pulled out of the race. Yes. Don't let nothing, nothing, listen to me, don't let nothing hinder you from walking across the finish line with God. Amen. Oh, it's God. not worth it. No. It's not worth it. Everything that's glorious and everything that's great is on the other side. Yes. Yes. And if you fail oh, to get God. to that other oh, side, Help you're, us. you're in deep trouble. Oh, yes. You're in deep trouble. Yes. So I'm going to pray with you right now. And then I'm going to pray for oh, those God. that have never known this walk. Yes. You've yes. never known a spiritual race. You don't yes. know anything about yes. a spiritual race. You All you have to do is go to Jesus and he'll put you in the race. And then get into this word. And then get filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't let nobody tell you you don't need the Holy Ghost. You need him to give you understanding. Yes. You need him to be your divine coach. Oh, you yes. need him to guide yes. and direct yes. you in this life. Yeah. You don't know how to get out of a valley unless the Holy Ghost shows you. You don't know how to climb a mountain unless the Holy Ghost shows you. You don't know how to do anything That's in this right. life That's unless right. the Holy Ghost shows you. Oh. Because he gets the instructions oh. from the Father. And the Father gives them to the Son. And the Son gives them to the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost gives them to us. Father, I ask oh, you now Jesus. in Jesus' mm. name, that one that for whatever reason oh, pulled out of the race. Yes. We don't know the reason, but God, you oh, do. But yes. you are really ready and willing oh, to forgive yes. them and take them back into the race. Oh, yes. It don't make any difference if it's, if it's been years ago or when it was. God, you're ready to take them back. You said you would not cast anybody out that called upon you. And I'm believing that they will call unto you and say, Father, forgive me. Help me to get back into the race. Give me what I need to make this yes, run to yes. the finish line. Oh, and for you who have never known, never known what it was to run in a spiritual race, I ask you now to accept Jesus as your Savior, yes. to guide and direct you through the rest of your life, that you'll be able to go across Great. the finish line Yes. like everybody else. Yes. Don't look at nobody else but Jesus. He's the one we're living for. We're not living for nothing else right. except him. Oh, and let yes. him guide and direct you. And, we'll, and I'll tell you, I see you on the other side. I may yes. not even know who I'm talking to, but oh, I see you on the other side. Yes. If you get in the race, because I don't have any intentions of falling out of this race, Amen. I'm going to stay in it until I hear, well oh, done, thou yes. good and faithful oh, servant. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, yes. Sister Mason, not before we give it to Sister Joko, he, she sure can wind it up. I thank God for just that one word, oh. understand. Yes. And I thank God for Sister Pike. Yes. If you don't understand now maybe you'll never understand oh, but we're going to keep praying that you oh, get a God. good understanding oh, and we get our priorities straight yes. oh, to God. get in the race and run it oh, with God. patience yes. and yes. endure until we get yes. to the end that's right you know um two or three things that that you talked about yeah. then uh, uh, we have dreams yes people have goals they want to reach they, they start that's out it. in life and, and, and just like going to the post office, yeah. it, it, somebody, you start off with a wonderful dream, you start off with a wonderful day, whatever it is, and you run across somebody and they pull you down. Right. They say something, and if you don't get right back in there after That's that dream, it. if you don't get right back in there, yes. you're, it's gonna it's gonna right. slow you down That's in that it. race, Nita. Oh, yes. And and then if you but if you pull yourself, you get in the word, yes. and you get encouraged again, or somebody comes yeah. along and gives you a word of, of encouragement, yes. then you can get in there and you go again. Yes. But don't think just because That's you it. did that that somebody else is not gonna hit you again. Yes. That's, That's right. right. And there's not always may not always be that coach at that corner That's right. at that base. That's right. But, but you gotta 
go back and ask to, and get in the Word and ask for that. And another thing you said was uh, that that brought home to me was how long that person is. Remember in the scripture where it talks about uh, the 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 wages of the person. Yes. You know it. it the same person, they got as much gold and as much reward as a person who had worked yeah. for a short right. time. Yeah. So just because they've lost it and can get back in that That's race, it. they didn't, God's going to bring them right back right. into that full fold again. And another thing it, with tiredness, sometimes we have to stop on the sideline for, for nourishment. Sometimes our bodies are tired. Sometimes our minds are tired. Yes. We get, we get so engrossed That's in the worldly it. things mm-hmm. that are around us. Mm-hmm. But we, once we get that nourishment, once we get fed, you can get up and you can get back That's in that it. race. And, and, and however, whoever will, will stay around people who will minister to you. Find, don't, get away yeah. from those people That's that, are, that are pulling you down, yes, that are dragging yes. you down. Yes. Joe, jump in here. Come on. Are you ready to jump? Oh, yes, yeah. she's ready. <laughs> she said understanding and she said a race. And God dealt with me about walking with God. Yes. It pays to walk with God. And I want to just, in the dictionary, I looked it up. Anybody knows to walk is a slow pace. Yes. But here's what it says. In Webster's Dictionary, it says, to go on foot at a moderate pace, to follow a certain course. Yes. As to walk in peace. Yes. To walk along to a company on a walk. As I'll walk you home. That's that's you've heard that statement. Somebody say, I'll walk you home. Yeah. They're accompanying you on a walk. The act or manner of walking a stroll or a hike. Mm -hmm. That's what the natural meaning is Mm -hmm. of a walk. Mm -hmm. I was in a business place the other day at at the beauty operator's place where I go to get my hair done. I picked up a magazine and the magazine says there was a there was a something written there that says some walks you measure in miles, but this walk you measure in lives. Mm -hmm. And that went home to me. And when I begin to think about it, this walk that we walk with God, we have to walk with God. In order to walk with anybody, you have to be going the same direction they're going. In order to walk with God, He initiates the walk. Yes. He invites the walk. Yes, He does. He says, "Come and walk with, walk me. with me." In order to walk with Him, we've got to be obedient to Him and walk according to His rules. Like Sister Pike said, "You run." The Bible says, "They that wait upon the now Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run." Yes. And, and not, not be, be weary. Yes. And they shall walk and not faint. Yes. Listen, at times it comes down to a crawl, just like she said. Sometimes it's just a slow walk. It's not to the swift. It's not to the Let's one that it. started with a bang yeah. and ended with a fizzle. Yeah, it's the one it. who continues hey, in the, the walk. Yes. And I, it, for me personally, I need him. I need him this morning as yes. bad as I need worse. Yes. Because we're nearer the end than we were That's when it. we first started. Yes. We had no idea how long we'd be in the race, but I entered to win. I entered to finish and I entered to hear the finishing line. That's what I entered for. I haven't changed my mind this morning. If we'd have been mindful of those things where we come out of, that's what he said to to those Israelites. Mm -hmm. If you'd been mindful of those things Mm -hmm. back over there, you certainly would have opportunity to go back every day. But thank God for the challenges. Listen, the devil should have stopped us all while he had opportunity. It's too late now. 
now because of the grace of God and the strength of God and the precious presence of God. Without that presence, I'd rather be dead for that is life and that is heaven to me. Wherever I be, if he is there, there, if he's there and he said, I come not to leave, but to stay with you yes, forever. Amen. The only thing that will ever take him away from you is that you won't repent of your sins. Everybody, I'm not teaching sinless perfection. I'm just teaching yes. that we have occasions and a lot of times we fail God. Yes. We sin. He said, I say unto you, don't do it. But if you do, That's it. we have an advocate yes. with the Father, yes. Jesus Christ the righteous. He is my advocate this morning. That means he's yes. my attorney. Yes. Yes. And he will make intercession for all of us before the throne of God. And he, he'll come to us where we are, in prison, in homes, in yes. churches, yes. wherever we need it. We need him today. If there's any sin problem, we need it. Yes. But let Listen, I don't want to get off of this walking with God. Yes. When I saw that, God reminded me, you've got to practice what you preach. Yes. That's, it. That's it. If you're going to preach, you're going to have to live it. Right. Yes. Yes. Have I failed? Have I always practiced no. what I preach? No, I haven't. But I had to hit my knees again yes. and say, God, yes. I missed it. it. I yeah. missed it. And, I, and it hurts you. It leaves you empty when you've once tasted the dove of heaven. When he's once graced your spirit, there'll never be no other time that yes. you'll ever be the same. <laughs> Neither can you be satisfied yes. with the yes. mundane things. Neither yes. you can't be satisfied with just a portion of Right. You can't be satisfied with just no. half of the will of God. No. There is a good and perfect and a good, acceptable and perfect will. I believe it's all one. I don't believe God's going to let you get by with just a good will, just an acceptable will, just a perfect will. The whole thing makes a, yes. a perfect will. The good yes. will of God is obedience to his word. The per mm. and, the, and, and the acceptable will is when God accepts mm. you by the blood. Yes. except you when you repent. He does do that. He doesn't cast us off or we would never end the race. Never would. Never would. And you mentioned something a while ago and I wrote down this while I was writing down what little note I said. I said, it's a note. It's written without faith. It's, it's impossible to yeah, please God. Yes. For they that come to God must believe that he is yes. and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. And then when I read that about, about measured in lives, these are measured in lives, the race, the walk. Adam yes. and Eve started in the beautiful Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. everything perfect, but there was a hindrance in that garden and there was a, a spirit that entered that devil that had fallen from heaven many years before because of pride. The same thing will ruin a person, ruin a church, right. ruin a nation. Mm -hmm. Anything that's got pride in it, it's got I right in the center. Right. And if you take that out, you can't spell pride in any direction when you take the I out of right. it. When we can let God take over the I and bend it to make it like Christ, then when they saw Adam and Eve had it perfect. They were in this beautiful place. They begin their walk with God. Every day the Bible said, Jesus, that God came Walking, down yes. in the cool of the day. He came down in the evening time yes. to talk with them, to walk oh. with them, to teach them, yes. to help them. And one day, you know the story, Jesus. and their walk ended as they all know it. The walk ended when the devil tempted Eve and, and she didn't have to fall, but she did. And he didn't have to fall either, but he did. And that ended their race. Listen, we don't have it made. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. We don't have it made. And I know I've just got a minute, Go ahead, Joe. a few minutes, but they Adam needed. and Eve never walked again the same way they did. Fear entered. Everything went to wreck. When sin enters, everything goes to pot. But then there was one man named Enoch. 
Yes. He lived 65 years. The Bible says he begot Methuselah. And then he lived 300 years later. And the Bible says he walked with God. Yes. That means he walked 365 years in this life. And now he has never died because the Bible says went, that, that Enoch walked with God yes. and he was not so. because Ooh, God, God took to him. God. Yes. God took him. Yes. And I'm asking God, take me take this morning. Yes. Not especially out, but help me to walk with God yes. in the yes. favor yes. of God, walking in obedience with God. And he's still alive this morning. Enoch has never died. Me personally, I believe he's going to be one of the witnesses who comes back yes. to Israel because it's Bible says it's appointed unto man yes. once to die, and after that, the judgment. And he has never died yet, so he will. But thank be to God, Sister Pack doesn't give the altar call. There needs to be no other altar call. But there is a life after death, and there is a walk with God. And whether we walk or don't walk, there's consequences. Yes. And when you do what God said in the walk, there is wonderful consequences. When you don't walk with God, there is disastrous consequences. Yes. And I just want us all to live to where that we are walking with God where he's pleased. Yes. Yes. Understand this. Yes. You know, Joe, um, we've got some more calls and we want to address those. But the thing that goes back to there is now no condemnation. Yes. yes. There's forgiveness for those who love the Lord. But you know, and, and I, that's one of my favorite scriptures because we all need that one. We got to know that. But there's a comma there, Joe. And it goes on and it says, uh, uh, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Comma, okay who walk not after the flesh, yes. but, but after yes. the spirit. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's okay. It. And that brings us back to all to tile this yes, together in did. this one minute that we've got left. We did get a call from a, um, a lady who says she wants to talk with Mother Bell. Yes. And after it's over, Mother Bell, so yes. I'm going to give you that call and let you uh, uh, talk to Esther. Amen. And so I'll give you that one. If you've got other calls, we're still going to be here a few minutes. If you, as prayer as we've gone through and something's come to your heart or a question about our scripture. And so there's one here for uh, also for discernment and from Bob. And so we're going to be praying for you, Bob, as we come off the air. So uh, give us a call. Uh, we've got some people in our audience. My goodness, we've got several here today. Remember that you can come down uh, on a Thursday morning, 1130 to 1230. We're always going to be here or be here for such a time as this, yes, right? As, it, as the Lord brings it to, to our need. Thank you and God bless you in your homes today. And keep in mind, it's all about Him. Amen. Right? Thank Amen. you. God bless.